Previously on Junior President, Kristen Mubanga, Mputa Ngalande, and Ali Nani Nakazwe came for election day to find out who was leaving the competition. One of them is leaving the contest, but at this point, we're telling you which one of them is safe and not going home. Which one of these three junior presidential candidates is safe? And when I say safe, I mean they're still in the competition. The junior president who's safe from elimination is... Ali Nani Nakazwe. Ali Nani, you're safe. Congratulations. You're still in the running for the junior presidency. Please take your seat. My lady and gentlemen, please take With Ali Nani surviving, one between Christine Mubanga and Mputan Galande was destined to leave. Christine Mubanga. I'm sorry, Christine. This is where it ends for you. The Zambian people have spoken and you got the least vote. So right now we're going to show you how the voting pattern was. Who got the most votes out of the three? Who got the least votes from the three? And how was that voting pattern? So, JP number one. JP number one was Christine got the least votes. JP number two, Mputangalande got the most votes. And then Ali Nani got the second most votes. So if you're eliminating two, Ali Nani would have left together with Christian. So congratulations, Buta. You're still in the, in, the, in the running. You want to say something? And now on Junior President. Good morning. Congratulations for making it to junior president. Uh, congratulations to you, Mputa, and congratulations to you, Alinani, uh, for making it to the next round and surviving possible elimination from the contest. I'm actually impressed they're standing together. Eh? The nominated ones unite as well. Congratulations. So today you're getting your first assignment for junior president. Number two after our first nomination. This is the first after the first elimination of Christine Mubanga. Your next assignment is bordering on education. How would you better the quality of education in the country at primary, secondary and tertiary level at the university? Later on you get to tour the University of Zambia on Tuesday. You tour Unza. You're going to go there in the motorcade as usual. Congratulations to you guys for surviving the contest. So, can I have the two group leaders step forward? Congratulations. Uh, you can come and stand right here. And you can stand on my left pericum. Just, just, just right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there. Don't move so far from me. Okay, so what we're going to do is this. These will be your group leaders for the next assignment. And ultimately we're 11, so six will have one leader, and the other five will be on the other leader side. So what's going to happen now is we're going to invite uh, the names. Please help us with the names. So this contains the names of the two leaders. So I'll call each one of you. The name you pick 
that's a group where you belong. Is that fine? So I'll start with John. Please come and pick a name for a leader who you will belong to for this assignment. Yes, and show it to that camera. Okay, congratulations, you are on Team Perican's side. Next, Ali Nani Nakazwa, come and pick a team leader's name where you will belong. Okay, just there. Okay, another one on Perican's side. So we do have three on Team Perican, congratulations. Mputa Ngalande, surviving junior president. Please pick a name of the team which you will belong to. Farai, congratulations, you are on Team Farai's side. Okay, Esther Mwansa, please come through and pick a side. Mm, you're dropping them. They already dropped, okay. Farai, okay, so you're on team Farai side. Congratulations. Wantula, come and pick a side. Okay, what side is that? Farai, congratulations. You're on team Farai side. You are reunited with Mputa. I'm glad you guys are on the same side. Ah, uh, Kunda, please step forward and pick a side as well. Okay, so she is on Team Farai's side. Congratulations, Kunda. That is the team to which you belong. Joseph Mulenga, our chairman for the AU Summit. Please pick a side to which you will belong. Congratulations. And your team is Perikant. Congratulations, you are on Perikant side. Muiza Zulu, please come through and pick a side. Okay, so Mwiza is on team Perikant. Congratulations. So there are five on the other side. Natasha, there's one remaining. Okay, congratulations, you are on team Farai's side. Okay, so there we have it. Kunda Mwitwa, Wantula, Mputa, Farai, Esther, Natasha, forming one team. Wow, Mwiza and Alinani and uh, Perikin and John and my brother over here, Joseph, are on one side. So can I have the two, two leaders just to come through, come to me? Okay, uh, yes, yeah. so tell us, what is the name of your government going to be called? Well, the name of my government is Ubuntu, a name that is used across Africa and basically signifying oneness and um, it's not a strange name to most of the people in Zambia, even the local ones. So basically it's a sign of togetherness and a sign that a group of young people who work together, they can achieve a lot. I mean everyone is good out here, what more when you have like five for example. Are you happy with the team or would you like to change? No, I'm, ha I'm happy with the team. I think that um, I was, I, I, it would have been difficult if I was, told, if I was asked the question to choose like, um, among them. But I, I love the criteria that has been used. I think it's very fair. Very fair. Yes. Congratulations. Mr. Kajamoto, yes. what is your team's name? Uh, the name of my team is Chitubuko. Chitubuko? Development. One development in every sector of the government, including education. Uh, we're talking about education, so one development. What language is Chitubuko? That's uh, Nyanza. Yeah. Oh, from where I come from? Yeah, from where I come from. Ah, okay. Yeah. Congratulations to you yeah. as well. So, like I did say, you guys will be going to the University of Zambia, but before that happens, we're going to give you guys a chance to meet your teams. 
discuss what criteria you're going to have for the assignment and then ultimately whatever happens one team must lose the other team will win the team that loses we're going to have them give us three nominated members and then the general public will vote is that fair congratulations and all the best okay thank you so you're still watching junior president on tv1 of the zambia national broadcasting corporation after this we're getting better Perfect time Been dying to hear from you I hope that this moment lasts Cause it feels so true Maybe I'm out of my mind But I know that you love is hard to find When we love someone We become selfless Devoted And we accept the one we love wholeheartedly but the question we often ask ourselves is, how far would you go for the one you love? How far would you go to connect their heart to yours every day? Zamtel, live life today. So, having received their first assignment, the two governments are now going to deliberate and brainstorm on how best to tackle this challenge. First is Ubuntu government, led by Perikent Nkole. This was how their brainstorm went for their first assignment as a united group. Basically, the presentation is tomorrow, and I want to let you guys know that everything I'll be saying based on what we'll discuss here. And it's not about me, it's about the team. And let's just interact and share our ideas. We'll start with the ladies first. Everyone will be given equal time to speak. So um, we can have... Your thoughts on this one, Madam President, Alunani. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll start with Zambia's ranking. Zambia's ranking, according to Sa according to Sadiq, it was ranked as the worst in Southern Africa. So let us look at factors, push factors that can help Zambia change its education system in terms of maths and sciences. Firstly, I think that. Zambia should uh, change its education system because it's not favoring candid, um, educational candidates who are not uh, strong in, in exams. So there should be two types of education systems. Firstly, there should be a, an education system that enables them to discover the potential, the talents. The second one, where they follow the international standard. The first, the first one, if a candidate wants to study medicine or maybe someone wants to study law, they should deal with subjects based on what they want to study as comparison to studying all nine subjects, which would be too much on their part. And then the second education system syllabus that they can include, it should uh, include extra curriculum programs that can help them uh, discover their potential, what they want to do after they complete school. Rather than them crying uh, lack of employment, they can be able to create their own employment. Thank you, Madam President. We can have your thoughts on this one. We, we, we have inspectors in the Ministry of Education, and I think these people are not doing their job, right? Because these are the people who are supposed to go into the schools, into the universities to see exactly what's happening in there and uh, then they report to us and we can see what can be done about it but if these people are not doing their job then we don't know exactly what's going on so we'll come up with solutions uh, that have to do with other things that are not necessarily affecting the education system so i think first inspectors must do their job uh, very well so we need to look at that gentlemen can we have your take on this one i'll start with uh, your excellency mr john uh, thank you very much your excellency um, the Zambian curriculum is not very good. Um, it was rated 22nd uh, to be one of the worst education curriculum, and that was in 2005, it was ranked at 22nd out of the world, in the whole world, to be having the most children dropping out from school. And our education curriculum, it is not very much adequate because uh, our inspectors, the ones that we employ to uh, 
to inspect these universities, these schools are not doing their job. And if you can see, uh, our curriculum, uh, we are using syllabus D. And in Malawi, they are using syllabus C. But in Zambia, uh, Zambia is, it has a complex of syllabuses, that's one thing. There's IGSC, there's uh, Cambridge, there's syllabus D. But we should just go for one syllabus. And, it, and there's one school, an international school in Zambia, it's doing very well according to statistics. That's Banan International School it's in Zambia and Osaka. It is doing very well, even Chalo Trust School. So you as Mr. President and as, and, and as this party, what we should do is that uh, we should go for one syllabus. If we were to take Cambridge University syllabus, then let's take Cambridge. If you can see in the recent years, uh, Zambia, Zambia had most educated people. Because a long time ago, after just independence, uh, the Zambian people were taking Cambridge. Uh, the examination could come direct from the UK, direct from Britain, and the Zambian people could uh, write the same exam which the whites there in Britain were, were, were writing. So we have to work on our education curriculum. Okay, th thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, before I come to you, let's just allow His Excellency President Joseph to give his remarks so that I can look at the things that have been um, brought out. Your Excellency. Uh, talking about uh, education, we have to look at the prospect of uh, economy. Our Zambian economy, talking about the dollar and the quarter being depreciation, the depreciation of the quarter. So we have to uh, address the issue of economy. As, uh, as presidents, we have to look at uh, economic challenges. Uh, this has affected uh, the education system in the education investment at uh, households levels in particular leading to families not being able to send their children to school. So we have to look at the, the economy prospect. We need an education system which is increasingly uh, to become diverse, uh, giving alternative uh, parties, uh, alternative path to access to educational opportunities. This I'm talking about to diversify and not look at uh, a certain, if someone wants to do medicine, for example, looking at uh, medicine subjects in high school were supposed to diversify because we're talking about the Zambia which is facing many economic and social challenges. So we need a diverse... Well, the um, African Union Summit was um, a good assignment for me, which taught me a lot of things. I think I learned a lot. It, it, it was about representing another country, which you've never been before. So it was, it was about being creative and really being the president that people want to see. For me, I had one aim, and that was going out there in front and speaking and people listening, people keeping quiet and know that there's a president speaking, being able to show the authority and indeed stand out and being unique. You know, I, I didn't want to go there and start reading. Um, I wanted to go there and show the world what, what, what I can offer. And um, I think it was a good assignment for me, but I'm sure I will enjoy the rest of the assignments to come. Like, the one that I'm working on right now. And um, I thank God. I think without God, I wouldn't have emerged as one of the best speakers. I think it's God who chooses the best and he knows our motives and everything. Preparation is one thing that um, I, I, I give respect to, making sure that you're ready. Nobody cares where you come from sometimes, and nobody cares what, what you've been reading, but at the end of the day, it's about what you, you, you give in the competition. So um, the competition is very um, unpredictable because you can't say that this one is weak. Next time you just find them uh, being better than you. So you can't underestimate your opponent. I cannot underestimate my opponent. And I'm um, looking at the group that I've been given for this assignment, talking about education in Zambia. I think um, I had a bit of challenge if, if I was asked to pick like um, whom are going to be my group members. But I think it was done on random and I think nature decided and um, I think the group that I have, it's a very strong group. And um, I think our aim is to win because um, we, we, we want to be optimistic and we want to make sure that our ideas are unique because it's education and it's Zambia. So both, um, both, both parties will be talking about Zambia specifically. So you have to make sure that your, your ideas are unique and you stand out and indeed impress the crowd because you're, you're looking at university students, so you need to intimidate them when you're speaking um, in front there. It's, it's not going to be easy, but um, I'll try my best. I pray that God will be by my side. And um, being in a competition like this shouldn't be an opportunity for you to look at God as a choosy God, to say, you should choose me better than the next person or, or something. But I think he looks at 
how much you prepared and how passionate you are about what you are doing. I don't think there's anyone weak in my group except, for, of course, for um, um, Alinani who would need further research. And um, I think John's arguments were um, really uh, kind of like debatable, but we, we didn't have enough time. But I'm sure as we talk as a group, we'll be able to um, stand on one thing because I believe that as a group, we should speak with one voice. And I believe that when I'm speaking in front there, it won't be Perikens' voice speaking, it won't be me speaking, it will be about the five of us who came together, put ideas together and spoke because I believe that there's no I on the word team. And basically, I plan on doing my best for this uh, next assignment and um, basically just being me, you know, and people loving me for who I am. You know, I love speaking a lot. It, it's, like, it's like I'm changing the world through um, narration. Um, basically, I just... Uh, Thank God for this next assignment. I look forward to other challenging assignments. And um, if I would make a recommendation, it would be everyone being given an opportunity to make a national budget. Having been done with the first presidential assignment and brainstorming over it after the first elimination, it was now time for us to listen as Chitukuko government were to meet and deliberate on their upcoming assignment to find out how they can better education in Zambia. Chitukuko, led by Farai Kajemoto, also did have the brainstorming session and this is exactly how it went. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome you all to our first meeting of the Chitukuko government cabinet. Uh, our first issue today is that we're going to talk about how to improve the education system in Zambia. Your views are welcome and you're allowed to debate and talk about issues that are concerning the education sector in Zambia. For first, we'll start with uh, Minister Wantola Simbaya. Just tell us an overview and some issues on education. Well, the education sector in Zambia is one kind of sector that uh, each and every one of us has to be concerned with. This is due to the many duties that it possesses to the nation. And I feel there are many things that we have to change and improve on in our education sector. One of them is uh, the infrastructure de uh, development. Quite all right, we do not have the necessary resources to continue building more universities and uh, schools. But what we can do is that we can improve universities as in the state of the infrastructure, try to maintain some of them and then we can build some more classes in boarding schools and other high schools that we already have and lastly before my comrades come coming the other thing that we can do is that we can make sure that uh, we level the points of qualifications both for the males and and uh, for the females so that everything can be fair and square thank you very much uh, we've talked about infrastructure we can see most of the governments are working on infrastructure what other things can we do that we improve the education sector in our country? Yeah, I think about the curriculum. I think from grade one to grade seven, they should, they should make our, our children to know exactly. We should let them do more subjects when they are still young. And when they reach grade seven, maybe they can go, they can know now which subject they are, they are good in, and we can let them con, con, concentrate on those subjects and what they want to do in the future. Maybe they want to do, if someone wants to come to become a doctor, they will concentrate on that subject, what they want. But below grade seven, we should let them have open minds so that they, they are able to know what exactly they, they explore in other areas so that they know where they are good at. And just in addition to what uh, Mr. Kota is saying, I think when we look at the education system itself, the way he's saying that when young people reach the grade 7 or grade 8, they need to have a certain direction. So when we look at the syllabus, I think there is no need for most of the pupils to be having maybe 8 subjects. Let's say one wants, wants to be a doctor, let that person focus on sciences and mathematics, which is a mandatory subject in English, and not having other subjects that are dealing with business like commerce or accounts, I believe that would take it anyway. Otherwise, you need to focus on one specific subject in the range that you want to do. For example, to be an accountant, you take accounts or commerce in a commercial way or business, then you go for biology and other sciences when you want to do medicine. Okay, um, okay. I would also love to see that we incorporate entrepreneurial and vocational skills in our medical practice. We've seen that most of people are dropping out of school. Maybe let's say at grade 8 level or grade 9. But if one has learned a skill of tailoring, they'll be able to use that in their field. As Even if they drop out of school, they, will, they can open up a business center, let's say a workshop where they'll make sure 
and life goes on. Um, I would like, uh, I like what he said about the natural resources, about us not having enough resources. Maybe you're talking about funding. Well, you see, when you look at the world economic status, um, let's look at USA. USA makes money by taxing property. And if Zambia would not like to tax the property, there are these certain days that are put, like Mindelunga. Mindelunga has got a very good pineapple plant and stuff. There's a certain day that's put where everyone is exporting and exchanging those pineapples. Most countries make over 800,000 US dollars, even millions of dollars. So you could also take part in the export and use that money to improve the education sector. We also look at um, there's this um, countries, there are certain countries that make a lot of money just by exporting mangoes and we've got more mangoes than them what happens in the rainy season we've got mangoes um they get rotten do we make any money out of that even on the streets you find not many people would want to buy mangoes we've got all mangoes at our places so why but then other people out there would make use of those mangoes so we should take part in exports and use that to our advantage i would also like to say um education can be defined as a skill given to you for survival and i don't like the fact that we have to wait for us to know what education benefits us until we graduate from school maybe we can try practical things like um taking the children out there into markets like she said she's talking about entrepreneurship why should you be exposed to entrepreneurship when you're out of school why can't we do it when we're in school? I think it would be better if we put more practical work into it. At least you see um, 60% theoretical and 40% practical. That would be really nice. Why would I want, I want to be a marketeer, but I don't even know how to sell a single vegetable. If I have the exposure at a younger age, I will be able to do that very well. The summit was quite challenging. We had uh, of speakers who are there to speak and finally I was the best because of I prepared very hard I had to do adequate preparation researching and practicing the whole the whole time that we were given the project then finally I was the best then well, I'm now given a group uh, the group that I'm given I would say it's a very much very much good group that it's very possible that we'll win and very much possible so the group has got great ideas we all have great ideas we have people with good brains and we have people with skill make sure that uh, the way our group is is a very much possibility that we're going to win this competition and though I'm intending to lead this group is uh, I'll, I'll be there to chair the group and make sure that when I go for, to present whatever we've talked about, I won't disappoint my group, I won't disappoint my cabinet. I'll make sure I speak to the best that they want me to speak. Then finally, I would say people should continue supporting us. People should continue supporting junior president because this is something for young people and young people indeed uh, are needed to be supported because we are the leaders of now and not of the future tomorrow. Leadership starts right now. So as we continue in this journey of junior president, we'll have great leaders, which I'll be one of them, one of the great leaders that we'll have from junior president. So viewers out there and everyone out there, continue supporting junior president, and my group will do the best to see to it that we convince every, each and every person that will be part of that presentation, that indeed we have validated points that will see to it that we will make the education sector to be better from the way it is right now. I thank you very much. Later that day, the candidates were met by the Association of Business Executives, ABE, who had some exciting news for the candidates. We've seen a lot of talent that has been exhibited by um, a number of you, and um, we felt a cupboard on us that we should come on board and provide that support because we know that uh, investment in education can never equal to investment in any asset. And once you invest in education, no one can ever take that away from you. So as ABE, we have uh, uh, provided two scholarships, two ABE scholarships, to any of the winners that will actually be deemed fit or that will qualify. Uh, to, to, to get this scholarship. So uh, this partnership that we have uh, uh, joined hands with ZMBC and Junior President uh, uh, team, we hope it will change the lives of somebody because we believe that uh, in changing the lives of people. So with this uh, uh, privilege that we have, we want to urge all of you to continue with your, your, your efforts, to continue with your hard work, and bring out that which you have inside of you because a dream that you have inside of you of one day becoming a president 
should not die. And for those of you that may be eliminated along the way, your dreams should not die. Always stand up and fight and you always achieve. So the way these scholarships will actually work, it will work in such a way that those that have already completed grade 12 and you happen to be the winner, you'll be able to start the ABE program, which will be a full scholarship at any of the uh, local colleges that we have accredited. And it will be a fully paid for scholarship, starting from the materials, tuition, including exams. And for those of you that probably may not have completed your grade 12 and you happen to be the winner, this scholarship will cover your, tuition, your tuitions from the grade which you are at until you finish your grade 12. So we, we, we were very excited when um, we discussed about this uh, uh, partnership or rather this uh, you know, uh, venture where we could contribute and in transforming the lives of um, any of, uh, of you that is going to win the, uh, the scholarship. So we are very, very happy and we are very excited with what, uh, they, what you guys have ex exhibited. And we just want to urge all of you not to relent. We urge you not to relent. Please showcase what you, what you have because the world is there and waiting to see what Zambia can produce. And you are the future. We don't believe as ABE that you are future leaders, but you are leaders of today. So you need to start demonstrating that which is inside of you. Do not leave it for tomorrow. We need to do it today. So with the scholarship looming and the grand prize looming at the same time, it's just getting exciting for our participants. But our focal point is on the next assignment, the one they've been brainstorming on. How is the performance going to be better? Is it going to be Ubuntu or is it going to be Chitukuko who are going to carry the day? But ultimately one team must do better. This is what's coming up next on Junior President. Get a life, get a gig with Samtel's new permanent bundle. You heard right, your internet dreams have come true. For only 49 kwacha, you get 7 days of 1 gigabyte data. Internet heaven is now permanent and is here to stay for g 49 kwacha for 1 gigabyte all week to download, upload, connect, update, share, stream, broadcast and just well, internet. All day, every day for 7 days. So what are you waiting for? Get a life, get a gig today. Zamtel. Live life today.